All right. Ah, so it's been a minute since I've been in front of the camera a little bit. Don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna keep this brief. Uh, oh. I know you guys have favorite cartoons out there. You guys either are Team Nickelodeon, Team Disney, or my favorite Team Cartoon Network. Me personally, since we were all born in the, the late 1990s and early 2000s, we probably grew up on these shows like uh, Looney Tunes or, shoot, Grim Adventures of Billy Mandy, uh, Power Rangers, you name it. All right, so for today, we're gonna talk about the top 10 cartoons uh, from Cartoon Network. Yeah, this is not biased at all, so don't 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 judge me on this or anything, all right? So we're gonna get this started, and we're gonna get this rolling. So here we go. Okay, first thing we got up on the list, top 10, is Teen Titans. You know the theme song. When there's trouble in your hood of Teen Titans! So Teen Titans was originally created in July 19, 2003. Uh, about five different teenagers were multiple of teenagers that are, were born or, you know, gifted with superpowers. So, and you have Beast Boy, Cyborg, Raven, Starfire, those top five. And you know that the main ringleader is, of course, Robin, the Batman's apprentice, Boy Wonder, you name it, uh, Bruce's son. There's so many names that you could find this boy. It's, it's crazy. So apparently this team goes through, you know, the whole city, it's not Gotham or anything to save the day or save the world from evil. And of course, the main nemesis is Slade. Um, you also have the other villains like the Hive and then you have uh, the London dude. I forgot his name, uh, but he has a very quiet voice like this, duck, eh? And <laughs> it's pre actually pretty funny. Uh, you got like a whole little here and there, a little bit of comedy there, like Beast Boy with his witty jokes and he's my spirit animal. I'm just gonna say that right now because I love pizza and Beast Boy is just a total vibe. And then you also have Starfire who's ignorant to all the facts of, you know, living on planet Earth. And you also have Cyborg, you know, who has his favorite slogan, Booyah. And then you have Robin who takes stuff too seriously. But overall, I'll say that this is one of my favorite shows and also it's, uh, one of the top tens on uh, Cartoon Network. Number nine, we got Samurai Jack. Yeah, Samurai Jack was made in August 10, 2001. Uh, it's about this guy named Jack, of course. He was a prince. His father was given uh, a majestic type thing that uh, the guys gave to him. It was Ra, Ramen, and Omen. Omen, Omen, Omen. Uh, he was trying to do uh, use that little majestic thing to save the world from the demon shapeshifter called Aku. But then when the Aku got out, Aku uh, ruled the world and imprisoned Jack's father. So Jack's mother sent them off, you know, so Jack's kind of parentless, uh, I would say an orphan. Is, is that right? Anyways, yeah, he, he was sent to around the world to train and all that stuff so he can you know become powerful and use the majestic sword to defeat Aku. so this uh show is is pretty action-packed all the kids love it when i was a kid i loved it even though it had some violence in it, it came on adult swim at nighttime for that what reason i don't know it didn't have any cuss words to me which i don't know so I was about, when it come out, 2001, I think I was about like two, maybe three when it came out, but it was still cool. <laughs> it was pretty, pretty action-packed. Yeah. Yes, from within, 
How do I get inside? Ow! Here's a uh, top favorite from everybody, of course. Everybody should know this one. Powerpuff Girls. Yes, I said it. Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, Powerpuff Girls. Powerpuff Girls was made by Chris Savino, made in November, made on November 18th, 1998. Compared, it has six seasons, and um, yeah, it was made when I was born, or right after I was born. So I don't even remember watching my first Powerpuff episode, but just know that this thing is very, very old. So basically, this show is about um, three girls that were made in a lab by Professor. You tone, you tone, you tony, utonium, Professor Utonium. You know, sugar, spice, everything nice. These were the keys of making the perfect girls. That all of a sudden he spilled something over, and then all of a sudden these girls got superpowers, and now they fight to save the day from evil doers and all that stuff from uh, eight with a big cone shaped dome head named mojo jojo mo mo mojo mojo jojo mojo jojo say that three times fast yeah the probably one of my favorite characters on there because he, i don't know he's kind of evil but funny in, in a different in like a funny kind of way and then you have the mayor which is played by tom kenny uh tom kenny's like one of the popular uh, popular voice characters voice actors uh, on Cartoon Network you're gonna see him around a lot on uh, Powerpuff Girls and also other shows on Cartoon Network but yeah this season uh, like I said it has six seasons the Powerpuff Girls they travel around saving the city and also try to live a normal life um, as regular girls um, but they just can't help it because they got super strength. They try to fight the green, uh, Greenway gang. Then they got the lady crab. I forgot her name was what her name, but they fight a lot of people. So, um, on to the next one. If we would just move that there. Oh. Number seven, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. It was made by Craig McCracken on August 13th, 2004. Uh, it's actually pretty dope though, McCracken. I mean, what's up McCracken? Nothing man, I'm just cracking. Cracking, McCracken, you know, I don't know. Which is made in, uh, this show was made in August 13th, 2004. Uh, starting character, main characters are Blue and Mac. Blue is basically look like a, you know, ghost-shaped figure. That's blue. <laughs> and then you also have Mac, who is a boy that's uh, not really fond of having friends, or uh, he gets bullied by his brother a lot, so he imagines a blue furry friend named Blue. And um, in the first movie, which is the very first movie, he was sent to a uh, foster's home because he wasn't able to take care of his imaginary friend because uh, they were always getting into trouble, which was mainly caused by his older brother, which was a big jerk face. And uh, when you go into this imaginary friend, imag uh, foster's home for imaginary friends, you see a lot of different friends and they're just waiting to be adopted by different people like it can be kids babies teenagers even adults had imaginary friends i even think i had an imaginary friend i think i still do um they have this <laughs> foster home for uh, made up individuals and they just have a blast in there like the mansion is huge it's ran by an old lady who is running uh whose imaginary friend is a bunny a old bunny english bunny called uh i forgot his name yes and then you have eduardo who's a big scary 
Mexican chupacabra, whatever. And then you got a tall imaginary friend named Will. And then you also have Coco, which is one of my favorite characters. You know, she's carefree another spirit animal and then they always have different uh different characters that pop up in every episode i think one of the favorite one of my personal favorite episodes was probably the one about cheese because i think mac imagined him and he was just and cheese was just annoying throughout the whole show because he would always say some repetitive stuff he would annoy the heck out of blue and he would he would have thought that blue was his father well he thought that blue was his father which was so funny i would recommend this show to anybody uh, the grim adventures of billy and mandy mm, that is my favorite show of all time so basically this show is about two kids that come encounter and befriend the grim reaper yeah the grim reaper death the hooded guy uh the hooded skeleton with the scythe yeah so how that came into play um apparently billy's hamster died uh mr chuckles um he said well i think it's mr whiskers actually mr whiskers mr whiskers was dying so they summoned the grim reaper and he was finna take mr whiskers away so in order to keep him alive, Billy and Mandy, they made a bet with the Grim Reaper to a limbo game. Yes, limbo. <laughs> Basically, the, game, the rules were if the Grim Reaper wins, and that means he would have to take Mr. Whiskers and Billy and Mandy's souls to the underworld. But if Billy and Mandy won, that means they would have to be their best, the Grim Reaper would have to be their best friend forever. So, more short, long story short, the Grim Reaper lost. And all because Mr. Whiskers pretty much, you know, bit his business. Grim Reaper and Billy and Mandy became very best friends for the whole entire season. How many seasons it was? They became best friends for the entire series. They encountered different um, different ghouls, characters like uh, the spinoff of a Harry Potter, like, you know, Lord Voldemort. They got a person named Lord Moldy Butt. I don't think anybody can have a Moldy Butt. Number five, <laughs> which is funny because that's five people in it. Codename Kids Next Door. Codename Kids Next Door is basically a kid agency that pretty much. Not, ran by kids obviously so you have number one which is Nacho Uno number two which is Hoagie number three uh, number four which is Wallaby and number five number five is pretty cool laid back number four which is the aggressive Australian who just loves to fight probably one of those bad kids you see in school number three is a sweet innocent person who is like all about rainbows sunshine teddy bears all that stuff number two he's a techno geek and loves food a lot me and him can hang out and number one is the leader that loves to work hard kind of reminds you of you know teen titans a little bit but kid version these 10 year olds they want to be kids forever they live up in a tree house a big tree house like i wish i had a tree house that big there's a secret agency like across the world they have weapons that are very creative like i think one of the most interesting ones was basically the gumball machine gun um just shout out different gumballs and stuff and they just fight evil against adults that try to get them to grow up like uh how should i say this count spank you like like you know disciplining your children uh kids they're bad so count spank you like he goes through the night and spanks kids and they turn into spank vampires. The show was made on December 6, 2002 and made by Bruce Knepp. Bruce Knepp is the leader of this show. So I'll put this in top six. No, top five. The top five most definitely. This is kind of, you know, set the bar next to Looney Tunes and Dexter. Ed and Nettie. Ed and Nettie. <laughs> Ed and Nettie is probably my favorite one, even though it's a dumb show. About three kids named 
of course, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Um, Ed, with the first D, is about, it's pretty much a guy that's um, dumb. Double D, or Ed, double D, Ed, two, Ed with two Ds. He's a smart one at the bunch. He's a scientist that loves experiments and he's kind of cautious on whatever. Mostly a, a neat freak, a germaphobe, whatever you call it. And then you also have Eddie, which is the ringleader of the bunch. Uh, Eddie's basically the man that comes up with a plan every single day. That's my inspiration because he always wakes up trying to get the money. So, but he always fails. <laughs> so he always comes up with a scam um, to, you know, make up, you know, anything like circus, a fake circus or uh, a fake tip tag service or whatever, whatever you want to call it, just to grab, like get some money and to get jawbreakers pretty much. The show started on January 4th, 1999, made by Donnie Ananoki. So yeah, shouts out to Danny and Nucky for that show. Now we're gonna go to the top three, cause uh, <laughs> you already know what time it is, man. One, two, three, yeah. Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo, yes. Johnny Bravo was made in July 14th, 1997, voiced by Jeff Bennett. Uh, you know, like I said before, Johnny Bravo gives off a uh, Elvis Presley vibe. He's a very big narcissist, big guy with muscles, really very conceited. Um, he's known for his karate chops, his karate moves, if he knows karate or whatever. But um, yeah, he tries to get all the girls in the show. Um, he still lives in his mom's house. I don't know how old this guy is. He's probably like in high school, but has the body of a 30 year old man. Uh, he wears a dark shirt all the time, dark shades, kind of like a, would you say, 70s, 60s, 80s, however people wore that stuff back then. But yeah, big body, lower body. Hopefully he'll find uh, the love of his life. But other than that, he's single, living in his mom's house. <laughs> um, this show is made by Van Hardebeck. Yeah. Number two, Dexter's Laboratory. Dexter's Laboratory is basically about a boy genius that loves to make experience, uh, experiments. He is a very smart little boy who invents, who can invent anything in the world and can put his mind into it. This show was made on February 25th, 1997. So this boy is always up to something, trying to create the biggest invention but his plans are always foiled by his younger sit well older sister as you can see taller and lengthier her name is Dee Dee <laughs> I had a cousin named Dee Dee I don't know where he's at but yeah shouts out to Dee Dee well in the that case can I order my ice cream now sure we interrupt this program to bring you Courage the Cowardly Dog Show. One, numero uno, Courage the Cowardly Dog. I was, I ain't gonna lie, I was pretty much scared of this show. This was like one of the scariest shows, scariest cartoon shows next to um, Goosebumps. Um, basically, Courage the Cowardly Dog was uh, started in February 16, 1996. Uh, this show stars uh, with the pink dog named Courage, of course. I don't know what type of breed it is, but it looks kind of like a, a naked mole rat mixed with something, whatever it is. Uh, so basically, Courage has a fear of everything. Um, his owners are an old couple living in the middle of nowhere, somewhere in the country, I guess. Um, basically, this whole show is based on a true story. Um, and also there's like ghosts and stuff living on the farm so courage pretty much has to face his fear with the different spirits and tries to you know help save his um his owners from the spirits or whatever 
but uh yeah that concludes the list man let me get out of here because it's past my bedtime if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you don't like it give it nothing just skip it don't give me a thumbs down because i'm gonna like i'm gonna just cry i hope you guys subscribe to the channel and you know and we can just have more fun and bring back memories from the late 90s to early 2000s space